Hello everyone, this is uh, DB0 once again with Tragic. Hello Tragic. G'day. Uh, we're going to be casting the second match between Fritzer and Cinquetica of the Board Games League tournament. This is the single elimination rounds of 32 players and we're going to see if uh, either which of them is going to pass to the uh, 16 player round. Uh, in the last match it ended with 6 players for the runner and 7 and victory for the corporation the Cinquetica, and it seems both players are playing Anax, actually. Um, oh, I've got an HBO. Yeah. And noise. So, uh... I, I, ex I expected to see noise. I was really surprised to see Wizard. Yeah, Fritzler, he, from what I've talked to Fritzler about it, he doesn't like the randomness of Wizard, of uh, noise. So he prefers the more uh, stable... Uh, uh, the, the, the stability that, that you get from Wizard. He was a very steady player, very, very reserved, you know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say, did, I wouldn't say like, uh, that he wasn't taking risks, but he wasn't re nearly as aggressive as someone, as we'll probably see from a noise player. Yeah, but I've seen him play him, does really actually win, it does actually win him games. He's really good at calculating exactly what he needs. Well, this is, I mean, look where he is in the competition. Of course, he's winning games. Yeah. All right, so a very decent start from both players. No agenda for the corporation, so that's going to give him an easier time at the start and a very good economic, uh, a very good economy for the runner, and uh, a medium as well, so which is going to mean that uh, we're probably going to see quite a bit, quite a few R and D runs. Okay, so we've got. Uh Hmm, Adonis campaign. Interesting. This is uh, still the go-to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Much. Adonis campaign is really good. Um, yeah. It used to be one of the few economy cards you could run uh, in uh, other than Pat campaign, but of course now we have alternatives. Uh, but it's still, as a Hasbro player, there's no reason not to include it for economy. Mm. But it's not getting splashed the way it used to be. No, not as much. There's no reason really, because uh, you have quite a good economy cards. You can easily put private contracts instead. If you really need this kind of economy. Archive memories will come in handy. Do you think he's running uh, worms and stuff? Uh, worms? Ah! Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think it's a worm deck. Delete ice. No, I, I don't think it's a Wyrm deck because Wyrm, to really use uh, Wyrm well, you really need the Cyber Exodus cards, uh, like the personal workshop. Mm -hmm. So that you can sp exactly. you can put your uh, parasites there and then uh, be able to spring them at the moment that you need and uh, break with uh, Wyrm. But in non... Uh, in, in the uh, Trace Amount set, until the Trace Amount, I don't think Wyrm was uh, used at all. But it's funny how one card from the Shapers actually made Gwyrm quite a powerhouse. Looks like uh, Sequetica is on a bit of a bathroom break. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can take the opportunity to explain some of the cards to your reader, to your viewers. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing else to say at the moment. I'm quite glad that we're seeing two Anarch players. Um, of course, I'm still rooting for uh, Fritzler, not only because he's European, but because he has the balls to play Wizard, which everybody com considers the worst runner out there. I like Wizard. I play Wizard. <laughs> yeah, but I play too. All my, uh, almost all my Anarch decks at the moment are Wizard. And um, he's wearing a he's wearing a Zork T-shirt. How <laughs> could you not like the Wizard? <laughs> true, true. <laughs> How can you not? He's also a master gamer. And he probably looks like uh, about half of the players playing Android Netrunner. Well, I actually heard that uh, that art is based upon one of the designers of, from FFG. That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I have a friend so of mine... What are the, what are the, other, what are the other runners and, and identities for corporations that we've seen coming out of the competition? I mean, All right, I'm we have... Um, we've seen a lot of criminal and a lot of Wayland. Criminal Wayland is absolutely the most common. It's sickening how many of them there are. Fortunately, not every... Co uh, not every... Uh, yeah, not every... Uh, okay. 
we're back. No, we're actually, Fritzl is now. starting his turn because he wants to start planning with his uh, uh, extra card. So he can use the time for the bathroom to actually plan the game. Um, yeah, so we've seen quite a lot of them. Fortunately, they're not all playing copy paste decks. Uh, we've seen one NBN player fast advanced that was uh, uh, that lost the game, and I've actually casted it. And uh, that was quite an interesting match because he was completely caught unprepared by the runner, just straight up ignoring all the tags. We've seen. Um, That's the thing. A lot of people. A lot of people think the tagging system is not quite as developed as it uh, can be. Uh, you know. It depends. For example, in Wayland decks, tagging is super scary. Especially with the uh, Project Atlas down. Uh, because they can just uh, find the Scorched Earth and finish you off. In other decks, most players, many players use tagging by itself. You know, with uh, no help as, uh, as a stopgap to the runner, to the trust resources. But by itself is not enough. You really need to splash some cards to hurt with the tagging. So... A very good one is obviously uh, closed accounts, that it's very splashable, it's only one influence. But uh, even a uh, freelancer can actually help. Of course... What's that, what's that new card? I mean, I'm only up to Cyber Opus in my own collection, but uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a NBN card and it allows you to advance a card of the amount of tags. That is from the core Please. and that is uh, Psychographics. That's psychographics, that's it, yeah. Is that, yeah. This is usually, that, that, uh, that is used sometimes in uh, fast advanced decks. Well, but I, 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 I'm seeing that card a lot, you know, because that card, that card's really starting to come more powerful because of the fact that people are just ignoring tags, straight up mm. ignoring tags. There's not so many of those you know, people, though. The problem is, yeah, if you have a lot... I've seen a few. If you have only a few people that ignore tags... Um, Oh, poor play there from Fritzer. He's just leaving his uh, HQ open, betting that the runner does not run an imp or does not have an imp in his hand. Oh, that's going to sting. That is going to hurt. That's why I love Neural Katana's pluses. Because very few people expect it, and it's so devastating at the first hand. Because if you consider people mulligan, so that they have a, a good hand. A good hand. And you go like bam, your hand is gone. So you basically <laughs> destroy their original advantage. And now he's up, he has to consider if he goes ahead and accesses, he may hit a snare. So is he going to do it? It's a scary proposition. Oh he's got he's got a he's got a You've got to, uh... He's going to go for it. Yeah, he's definitely got to, yeah. I mean, so, after you've taken all that damage, you have to take the risk. True. Sometimes the risk is too much, though. Oh, what a lucky draw. It gets deja vu. Yeah, he can pull his Crypsis out if he needs it. Yeah, but other than that, it's nothing great. Yeah. He only can get his Crypsis. He probably wants going to draw for a virus and then... Uh, get his scripts back with the virus. So as I was saying, Katana is so great, but uh, if they uh, run Mimic, you get so frustrated because Mimic just breaks it like that. But it's the perfect time to pull it it's in the early game. Yeah. So I suspect we're going to see that uh, Victor in HQ Roto turret in remote and uh, Adonis campaign behind it. Yeah, you know, I I'm a, I really think that uh, pr uh, the the campaigns can be left unprotected. I mean, even if in the really early game, sinking their credits is a really is really good. You know, even if you lose your asset, they've got to spend the money to trash. That's I would say I that wizard, is that you can in the case of runners. You usually want the runner. You, the, you, the runner usually has an easier time making credits than the corp. Yes. So in the, in the long run, definitely. Even the short run, even if uh, both players just uh, spend the turn taking credits, the runner makes more credits than the corp. Uh, the problem is that uh, 
every runner wants to keep the core poor because then they cannot raise ice. Whereas if you keep the runner poor, you need to have ice already for it to make a difference. So at the start of the game, it's more important for the core to make money than it is for the runner to lose money. Once you have a decent amount of uh, ice, then you can look into making the runner lose money. Alright, I'm pretty certain we see that uh, pad campaign go down. Yeah, definitely. Well, that definitely does make a lot of sense, but... Uh... Yeah, it always it always it always seems to me that from the from the games that I've been playing, that the even though the runner can obviously make more money, the runner can often be in a situation where it can't it can't afford to get through the ice that is there. You know what I mean? Like basically, this this server, the uh, the R and D server, mm -hmm. is basically immune for the time being. Yeah. And that and that is all you need yep. to protect the server at this time. Absolutely. The th that that's why uh, neural katanas and uh, roto turrets and uh, uh, hunters and uh, all that stuff is really good at the start of the game. Every corporation should run on some of these instead of wall of statics and uh, enigmas because enigmas and wall of statics are good at ending the run, but they're not good for your central servers. For your central service, what you really need is uh, something that uh, will hurt the runner when they face check it, as much as it will hurt you. They just use deja vu to get medium and Crixis back out of the graveyard. Okay. Not too. I'm much suspecting much he go yeah. for Crixis. No, he has actually not go for Crixis. Okay, interesting. What is he playing at? It's too expensive to keep breaking a katana with eclipses, especially when you have no economy. <laughs> okay, so this and is his chance. Fizzlers can really start putting up his defenses now. Yeah, he is the agenda. I'm wondering now, I'm not sure if he's going to protect the HQ or if he's going to make a remote server and play that agenda in. Unfortunately, the, the uh, roto turret is uh, neither of his eyes can protect against Crypsis very well, so it's very dangerous if he does it. However, he can do a very nasty trick: play the roto turret, well, the corporate troubleshooter, and the pro uh, priority requisition, and that can actually. Exactly. The problem is he doesn't have enough money to do that. He can't raise the roto turret and actually use the corporate troubleshooter with any effect. Well, he might pretty soon. I mean, if he just uh, spends a couple of turns, you know, getting those credits from a yeah. donor's campaign. But he didn't actually do that, so let's see how he plays it. What do we have trust yet? So we've seen two ice trust. Okay, so he's going yeah. to go for the full protection. I'm not really liking that uh, Victor in archives uh, because um, if the runner wants to, he can just get in. And the, the runner only wants to pass that server once. So that Victor is only going to waste him two credits for one turn. Two clicks for one turn, it's not a big deal. No, clicks are important. I mean, but unless he's actually discarding into that into there it's not really going to be a tempting target yeah but his noise he is he's going to be discarding well you have to you have to th I mean, with noise's ability you've really got to consider that that's going to be happening though that you've got to protect that area and here comes a stim hack where is he going to on archives holy shit that was a good bluff fritzler just totally outplayed him there he made him think the archives had something important and it's completely empty. So Synquetica exactly. is now wasting very important resources for that run. He might not even res this yeah. card. He doesn't have to res. It's no point. 
he can waste a click for the uh, Cripsis, but uh, in the grand scale of things, that click is not that important as the three credits that Frieza is going to save. So I'm really suspecting that he's not going to. He's okay. That was a beautiful example of a bluff. You're right. Absolutely fantastic play there. I was surprised that he actually did it. Even if it was, uh, if it had something important there with two cards, even if it was two three point agendas, you're not in such a rush to get in. You won't win the game from it, and uh, you may actually waste your time because many corporations just uh, preemptively arch uh, ice up uh, archives just in case. Uh, you trust too many cards too fast and then run. But yeah, that uh, Steam hack is really going to hurt, especially if it takes out that liberated account. He just wants to remove your virus counter, mate. Is it? <laughs> yeah, Sequitico was just a little confused about why he would resonate. Well, it makes some yeah, sense. It makes some sense. Uh, yeah. Sequitico is probably going to run that server again. Um, so these uh, clicks from Cripsis are going to add up, obviously, unless he pulls a yog. Um, so. The idea, I, I think the reason why uh, Fritzel did is that he's not rushing to do any agendas and uh, he wants to slow down the runner in the meantime. He's probably not going to be hurting for money either, or at least that's what he thinks. Yeah, there we go, they're and discussing it in the chat. Synthetic is a very, very chatty player. Uh, I'm, all, I'm always wary of chatty players in bluffing games. So easy to just let things slip if you're yeah. really careful about what you're saying. Yeah, that's why I'm always I, I prefer to say nothing uh, when I'm being teased, because uh, even if I uh, play, if I joke or whatever, they can easily guess through my words. And uh. yeah, that's what probably why. Synquetica wanted to run early because he's afraid the HP is going to archive memories, any agendas that were there. Okay, so he's now got two uh, agendas yeah. in hand. Starting to get a bit uh, scary because uh, that roto turret in, uh, uh, in HQ is not going to help. So what he probably wants to do at the moment is play that, uh, play that corporate troubleshooter in HQ. This is a definite defense against the uh, Cripsis, unless he steam hacks again. And uh, you can he make, make him think that it's a Nash or something, so he's not going to be so eager to run it. Yeah, so the brain damage trust a Cripsis, so that was a good hit for the uh, runner. Both of the other cards were, I think, better than the uh, Cripsis in his hand. Okay, there that's probably going to go in HQ. There we go. As predicted. And probably going to take two credits as well. Of course, the problem is that uh, he doesn't have that troubleshooter now to play anywhere else. Which would be really nice if he had, uh, if he had played that uh, roto target in a remote, he would be able to now start advancing agendas. Yeah, but I mean, what what could? I mean, he's basically he is advertising that there's something there. I mean, he is, but is, he this is not a bluff. It's not, but he's uh, the the whole point is that he knows that even if the runner knows that he has something there, he can't get through. Oh my god! Oh my! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> Okay, what he, can, what he can do now, no, he can also archive memories and get the knife from the archives. Ah, uh, he does have archive memories, yes. I think that's what we might see, no. No, he's just making sure he won't get into R&D, HQ. Yeah, just pulling the credits for uh, Corporate Troubleshooter. Yep. 
So what's going to happen is if he does run against it, he can just pump Corporate Troubleshooter to create the ice strength higher, which would mean that he won't be able to afford to pay for Crisis. Yep. He's so so glad that the runner didn't decide to run R&D instead. Of course, his HQ at the moment is so uh, vulnerable. Fritz are really... Okay, so look at this card. Liberated accounts. This is not a good card. It is a good card. Believe me. No. It is. No. I'm not going to go to the pros and cons, but it has some of the f best uh, rate of returns uh, compared. If you have the money to play it, it's brilliant. If you don't have the money to play it, uh, it's, t it's a bit... Uh, it's, it's taking down your tempo. But, it's but it doesn't. It's got the same amount of returns as Magnum Opus, except it's like more mm. expensive and slower. And it takes less clicks. It does take less clicks, that is definitely true. And that can be a I really big difference. If you suddenly need a burst of money, you can use it. So I'm suspecting we're going to see Fritzer play that katana in the remote and uh, possibly mandatory upgrades. And even, even we may even see him archive memories and other eyes in front of it, we'll see. Problem is the katana won't let him um, stop the run. Well, but he does have the roto turret counts. behind it. Uh, I'm thinking at this moment. A bit. I'm thinking at this moment. Fritzer is ready to, to sacrifice that agenda. So uh, he's probably going to let the runner uh, steam hack it if he gets it. And then he's going to um, play the priority requisitions. Mandatory upgrades is just such a hard agenda to score. Six credits he needs for that. Yeah, but it's game changing. If you score it early, it completely gives such an advantage to the corporation. Oh. It's, it's, it's so absurd. Powerful. Yeah. So powerful. The good thing is if you don't score it, if, they, uh, if you put like a few advancements and they steal it, uh, it's only two points again. So it's not a huge loss like a priority requisition is. I think Sequentius would probably be filling up his hand. I mean, he knows that uh, there's a Jinteki splash in this deck. Yeah, now is the time for Fritzl to go at three advancements on that card. Or he may even play that card. Fortunately, the runner can break it. Yeah. Um, he, it he could. He could. He could uh, archive memories and ice, like you were saying before. But no, no. I think he's going. He's he? he's going to go advance three times. But uh, I'm not absolutely sure. The Synquetica has 11 credits, so it's tricky to figure out what he's going to do. I think the best player at the moment would be Heimdall at the uh, server, because this means that. Uh, Cripsis cannot get tokens and run that server. There we go, yeah. No, mm. R&D. Yeah, smart play, because if the uh, runner suddenly plays a, mi a, mi a medium, he has a problem. So that's pretty decent play there. Protecting himself from a medium. On the other hand, he does have most of his uh, good agendas in his hand. So he mm, maybe want to rush a bit. Well, if he, if he does play, you know, runs on the HQ, then Frizzle is going to have to basically empty his credit pool to pump, to pump that one small ice. Yeah. And that's just going to be a complete giveaway. Depends. You know, Depends. I mean, not going to have the credit. Well, he's not going to have the credits to pump it next turn. Does have to because so he will trust Scripsis. Remember, the Grotto Tarot trusts in program. This is true. Okay, we're going to see that. We are going to see a Scripsis being trusted. Of course, it will cost uh, Fritzl quite a bit. He needs to pump it to 11 strength, 12 strength. He needs to pump it to uh, 11 strength to uh, stop the run. But it's going to hurt quite a bit.
I think it's worth doing it. It's quickly. Everyone gets out their calculators. <laughs> it's far too dangerous to leave that uh, HQ open. Unfortunately, he will trust the Cripsis, but the runner is going to keep his 11 credits. So it's going to hurt the uh, Frittler. Quite a bit. He basically lost all the economy he acquired until now. On the bright side, he can just start advancing that agenda on the remote without fear. Or without a lot of fear. Is he going to pump it? 11. That's all he needs. 11 credits. He needs exactly 11 to uh, stop him. There we go. 11 credits. <laughs> yeah, that clip is going down. <laughs> yeah, bold play, um, bold play, necessary play there from Fritzer. It's it's one of the biggest boosts. I think my biggest boost with uh, corporate troubleshooter is 16 credits. Okay, so that brings him down to seven. That leaves Inquirico with 11 credits. Yeah. Now the quest, Sorry. the thing is that if, he really. If Sorry? What were you saying? Well, what I'm saying, what I was trying to say is that uh, if Syncretica can draw an ice that can get through, it could really swing this an, game. An ice breaker, you mean, yeah. But I think now that uh, Fritzer knows that he knows it's uh, Rototard, he's either going to draw, try to draw an ice or he's going to use his archive memories. And Syncretica is now running through his deck to find that mimic. On his second Cripsis, if he does run Mimic. Oh, more, more credit gen, just when he needs uh, it. Yeah. yeah. That's hand buffer, so I don't think he's going to use it now. So he's got eight credits worth of ice in front of that agenda. Yeah, he only needs one. He only needs the rotor turret behind it. So tricky play there for a Frittler. If he if the runner manages still those agendas, it's automatically a tie. So they need to go to the tiebreaker afterwards. Yep, he's going to try and uh, gain that agenda, or maybe not. Let's we'll see. He has enough. Yeah, he to, to the red Yeah, Synquetic is going to come through and find an icebreaker. And uh, depends on if he actually finds it. That is going to depend if he wins, uh, if the game is a tie or not. The best he can draw at the moment the be uh, is a mimic. There you go. No one to. I would have helped, but he doesn't have a breaker now. Oh, if he got that Parasite one turn earlier, he would have been able, ah, he shouldn't have done it now. Now the corporation knows that he has the uh, Parasite. Now the corporation is immediately going to ice it up. And I think he's going to he's going to score this agenda next turn anyway. Yeah, and then he's going to gain a click from it. So he you can use that click to actually play an ice. Of course, he's going to not be able to raise that ice. So. Problem is, he cannot score that agenda and protect HQ. And he cannot protect HQ and protect that uh, agenda. So he's really in a tough situation now, what to do. I think if he doesn't draw an agenda... Well, he could lose both of these right now. 
Is he out of clicks? No, he's got to. Uh, yeah, he's out of clicks. He use clicks to draw. So why did he play that last click and actually uh, run the run the ice that turn? You think he should have done it? Left it as a surprise? Yes, absolutely. Okay, now he has three cards and two agendas. I think it's better if he actually plays the mandatory upgrades and makes takes it out, and then use the. Uh, the last click to gain a credit or something it's a big risk if he if the runner may will probably run uh, a lot of times but there's nothing else he can do if he can't protect that uh, the HQ and protect that agenda so he doesn't have enough cheap ice if he had like a, a one point ice a wall of ice or something he would be able to do it but he can't do you think he's going to draw a card no I think he's going to it's a really tough situation. I would probably score that agenda. And maybe... That's what I think I'd do too. Because that extra, cl that extra click in the long run could be more valuable. The problem is, uh, again, if he scores that agenda and the runner r takes the whole turn and runs on his hand, that is a very good chance he's going to steal both of them. So then you rely on luck. If he doesn't score that agenda, there's just no way he can protect that agenda and his AQ at the same turn. The runner is going to one run. From what I see, I don't think I don't think Frizzler is a real rely on luck kind of guy. Exactly. He seems pretty methodical. He seems pretty methodical. <laughs> but at the moment, he doesn't have an option. He knows he already knows he cannot protect both of these servers. So either he'll have to get to let his uh, mandatory upgrades go, or he's going to have to protect HQ. And I think he's obviously going to try and protect HQ, but. Uh, He's going to sacrifice his uh, archive memories now. He's gonna be. He's gonna look for another auto turret, probably that can be res for the same price. Red turret. I don't like. It. He's basically he sacrificing his mandatory upgrades. He's thinking, okay, two points is not a big deal as uh, six points. Uh, the problem is if the runner gets another parasite, that gambit there is going to completely bite him in the ass. Well, we'll see how it plays out. It really depends on what he draws next, but either way, he's only going to be able to protect one. Yeah. I think uh, if he if he does run on the main the main uh, HQ, it's probably going to be the best thing. He's going to deja vu out that Cryptus again. No, he's going to deja vu a parasite. And the parasite, yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Cryptus. I think now Fritzle should just let that uh, uh, that remote uh, that the central open. He, he doesn't have a chance to protect, so he might as well let him steal what he's going to steal. If he, if he reses it, he's losing that agenda, and he's going to get a run into HQ. That was a, such a lucky draw. I mean, you could, he could not have asked for a better card unless he just draw, drew... Uh, no, I think a better... Kind of, kind of. The problem is he now doesn't have enough money to actually do anything. So he has to run now, but wherever he runs now is a problem. He should have run naked. It was actually a bad play what he did. If, yeah. he if he had actually run naked on HQ, he knows it's a roto turret, yeah? So he knows he's just going to end the run. And next, immediately he can run the other mod server. He doesn't know what ice it is, it could be a wall of ice or whatever. But whatever it is, with two credits, it can't be bad. The worst, the absolute worst, it can be maybe an, uh, 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 at some hunter combo. But uh, that's very unlikely. Okay, now he allows, he allowed the Fritzler to score his mandatory upgrades. Which means he's going to go advance, advance, advance and play an agenda in that remote. So he's saving his one agenda because he can then raise one of his agendas in that remote. And out comes a toll booth. One of my favorite cards. Yes. But it may be that Fritzler is just going to... Um, uh, play that all booth in HQ now. We'll see. I would even trust that Roto turret. There's no point in it anymore. 
Again, the problem is if he plays at all both in R&D, the runner can get into grey mode. If he actually raises it. So how long has this competition been going for? Uh, two months by now. And it's been the same, the same pool, or is this uh, like round two, or you're getting towards the finals? Or? This is the first elimination round of 32 players. So this is uh, um, uh, the 32 players in the matchup, and uh, the. Um, Okay, they so played the six, round, six rounds of Swiss, and the top 16 from each side managed to go to the uh, elimination round. And we're going to play four rounds of elimination, and then we'll have the winner of the tournament. Well, he's definitely protected up the uh, HQ. He put down the toll booth. He yeah. didn't do any advancement, so he could have the 8-2 resid as well. Yeah. So, now, it's probably he's going to lose that mandatory upgrades if the runner runs. Unfortunately... Given last turn, I'm not so sure the runner will run. <laughs> of course, the runner doesn't know what that extra ice is. So, it could be something nastier. And he doesn't know what that uh, card there with the three tokens is. It could be a trap. He has to be wondering right now why it's not raised yet. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, so he's running out of to make sure he can uh, get some data sucker tokens. So he can uh, exactly break through for free. Uh, fortunately, oh, he did actually trust an agenda. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> that was surprising. Yeah, I didn't see that agenda being trust. Now he has one run to make, and I'm wondering what it's going to be. Probably a steam hack into HQ. No, he's not going to do anything. Okay, now he should he score that mandatory, finally. Oh, perfect. Uh, couldn't have asked for something yeah. better. He can actually score the mandatory, and then with a the click that he gains from the mandatory upgrades, play the uh, hedge fund and then have credits to res yep Frizzler's looking extremely good right now yeah he needs to do it I mean if he doesn't do it I will be really surprised now I mean, what other options does he have I mean he can leave the mandatory there the with the three clicks uh, the three advancements to bluff that it's a trap but I'm not really liking that solution I think he should take the initiative now. Yeah, but what advantage would he get from doing that? He could make more money. Yeah. No, why did he take that first? Why didn't he advance first? Okay, he's going to play no. maybe another agenda. Yeah, or he's going to put out the campaign. Yeah, maybe. But then he has basically just two agendas in his hand. Maybe draw a yeah, card. Go, go for the credits. Maybe he'll draw a card now. No, he takes a credit. Okay, interesting play there. Well, now he's got the 14 credits, which means he can res the right attendant and he can res the toll booth. Yeah, the problem so is... protected both of those areas. Yeah, the problem is that he has two agendas and one uh, card, other card in his hand, so... Uh, if the runner runs his hand now, it's uh, quite scary. Well, the runner's only got five credits. Well, yeah, he does have t he does have two points where the data suckers. But even so, yeah, he can't play the toll booth yet. He needs one more credit. So I will have to see how it goes. Maybe he'll run again on that. Uh, uh, on that victory, and then he can also steam hack, obviously. Yeah? But uh, steam hacking into R&D is scary. Oh, it's a 
could so easily provide nothing, but. Very, very cautious play by Fizzler. Mm -hmm. But uh, very correct play is what I've noticed. Because I definitely would have scored, I definitely would have done what you were saying. I would have scored that agenda and then put the next, the next uh, one of his agendas inside that server. Actually, no, that wouldn't be the best play. I think scoring that agenda and then, um, and then playing uh, the hedge fund would be better. Okay, so he's going to try and trust that uh, neural katana and start running on... Uh, yeah, he's trying to split the economy of uh, Fritzler at the moment. That's what he's getting for that, I think. I'm also surprised I see that uh, uh, account siphon. Yep, he's out, he's out of MUs. He probably didn't think that through. That's such an expensive splash. Look at that. Four uh, points. He must only have one of these in his deck. Uh, I have a noise deck with two of them. It's uh, really great at uh, forcing the corporation to defend everywhere. Whoa, he just... What? That, he just uh, deleted medium. Why is he running on... Because then... Uh, why is he... he just, I think he just wants to force the, uh, the corporation to raise something. He wants to keep the corporation poor at the moment. But it's not going to work because... What is that card, I think? It's a Heimdall. If he runs that Heimdall with his last click, it's going to hurt. Okay, it just seems seems you know a waste of a waste of a parasite to not even use uh, the medium's ability to be able to scour the deck more. Okay, maybe we finally see that the uh, mandatory upgrades being raised. <laughs> well, he's definitely going to take the credits. Yeah. Fizzler is now Ooh, rolling with the dodge. Nice. Oh, and another corporate troubleshooter. My God. That's great. That is fantastic. Question, where's the plate? R&D would be an option. Well, R&D is definitely not as scary now that it's, uh, he doesn't have medium. But he hasn't really drawn many agendas yet, has he? I mean, we've no. seen he, he's got enough agendas in his hand to win. Yep. And th how many more can there possibly be? I just think uh, R and D is not where he should be worried. I mean, that's not really a worry, especially with medium gone. So he managed to uh, delay he bl playing that agenda. It actually helped at the moment. That's what I mean, like really cautious play but actually correct like completely correct play very very impressive uh i i just uh i mean i'm not i'm not in these guys league obviously but uh the the patience required to not play that agenda and pay it so quickly I feel yeah like but i do think it's a mistake the runner should have known he could have scored that agenda if he really wanted to yeah so he knows. He's saying that in the in the in the chat. He's he's basically saying I should have gone and got it. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of things the runners have. Like that's one of the frustrating things about runner. In most situations, you were able to get out of it yeah. if you were playing either more aggressive or more defensive. Yeah. You know? If you actually, there's a lot of time where you just need to be looking at the math of the situation, saying, okay, if I run naked in R and D, he's going to trust my medium. But then I get into his remote. And maybe he was like, okay, if that's not an agenda, it really hamstrung me. So he wasn't, uh, he was not really brave enough to do it. Okay, so he's uh, saving that agenda for his remote. That's good play there. So his hand now is a bit less scary. I was expecting to see corporate troubleshooter go down as well at the same time, but uh, he can't. He didn't again. have enough clicks. Again, though, if he runs R and D, he won't be able to uh, raise that remote as well or his HQ. So, if I was in the place of the runner, I would probably go uh, 
uh, run first the R and D to force him to raise something, and then run somewhere else. And if I was yeah, a court, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just, just ooh, okay. Okay, here comes the skin hack. Where is he going? He's got to be going to the remote. Yeah, he's definitely going to the remote. I think the corporation should let him have it. To tell you the truth. Yeah. What what did he spend all his uh, clicks on? I mean, he put he put out uh, he put out the agenda. Why didn't he put uh, troubleshooter on there as well? Because he scored mandatory upgrades last time. So I think he's going to raise both eyes because he wants to take away the clicks from the runner. Yeah. Unfortunately, once the runner knows both of his eyes. If he plays another priority requisition, he can steam hack it again. Well, of course, a steam hack might take the other steam hack out, so we have to see how it goes. Ooh, do you allow returnsies in a in a competition game? Yeah, he didn't target, so I think it was a mistake. I think it's usually up to the other player to decide whether it's all. No, but like, uh, I'm still a little bit fuzzy about why he didn't play call for troubleshooter. Could you go through that again for me? Like he played, he used one click to put out priority. To no, no, he had he had the server. three clicks. He used these three clicks, clicks to no, he had three clicks because that was the turn he actually scored mandatory upgrades. So his first three clicks he used to score mandatory upgrades. From no, scoring mandatory upgrades, eh? No, no, but he's had a turn since then, hasn't he? No, no, that was that, that exactly the turn after scoring mandatory upgrades. Ah, oh, right, right, okay. Sorry, it is like about 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> So he's going to take that agenda. Without any cost to him either. But he still has won the game. Fritzl does have uh, need to s prevent him from scoring one more point. Of course, if he scores one more point, he wins the game. Uh, if he scores one more point, it's going to be two points at least. So either he wins the game or he loses the game at the moment. There's no opportunity for a tie. Uh. <laughs> So the pressure is on. Really, really on. I mean, surprisingly, because I think Frizzler is really. Oh, been and the last steam hack is gone. Game. Now, if Steve Frizzler actually checks what was discarded and sees the other steam hack, he probably will play the other agenda and the corporate troubleshooter as well. So that would be the smart thing to do if I was Frizzler. Check the, what the runner lost. You know, you see now three steam hacks there. So you go like, okay, agenda, corporate troubleshooter, and uh, I can raise it. And if you try to get in, I can do the job. Of course, the problem can is... You, can you just look through his, uh, his discard pile in this application? Yes. Nice. But it's tricky. Now the runner is going to go for R&D directly. So he really needs to uh, either take the money to protect it or put that wall of ice in front. So it's tricky either way. It's difficult to, to decide what to do. You can go for luck and say, okay, he's not going to hit another agenda in R&D. We've seen already uh, five agendas, but uh, as I said, 
Fritzl is not big on luck. He's already got two brain damage. If two. he puts down Hemdia Wall, if he puts down the wall in front of those things, he won't be able to activate Crixus and run on that server without taking brain damage hit. No, but uh, he can win with even uh, five brain damage. That is true. I think the katana at the moment is more than enough to stop him. Well, that's a bit uh, nasty to have to go in the middle of the game. What is he well, going to do? Concede? Forfeit, Actually, I shouldn't ask that because uh, then uh, Fritzer must have delaying in purpose. Well, it's all down to this priority acquisition. But even if he scores that, it's not. It's, he still has to score a whole other agenda after this. Yes. It is a tricky business. How to protect? You know he's going to run R&D next turn, most likely, and you know you can't protect everywhere. Okay, he's going to go for the money. I think that was uh, pretty good. Let's see what he does with his life action. Another Crixus and another Count Siphon. And a Magnum, and a Magnum Opus. Opus. Okay. It's going to help, but probably it's going to draw the credit here. Yeah, but now Fritzer should probably should, will probably start rushing something out. Now he has enough money to protect uh, R and D a bit. So he's probably going to trust that uh, uh, Katana and play a nice in front. Oh, right, he can play that immediately and score it. Nice. Problem is, he, if he uses the ability and he's unlucky. He may actually lose the game. But there's been a few okay. agendas in the game, so I have the feeling that he may not be that unlucky. You mean by just so accelerated beta test could actually discard an agenda and exactly. uh, archives? Ex exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. But I don't think he's desperate enough to go for that. He's probably going to go protect R&D and uh, play the agenda maybe with a corporate troubleshooter. It was a bit unlucky on the part of Fritzer that he drew so many agendas so early. If he didn't have to... Uh oh, okay, he's cleaning viruses. Interesting. If he didn't have to... another clip still to go. Yeah. Uh, that was actually smart, yeah. I forgot that he had that option. Uh, his uh, katana can protect him for a bit more. Um, yeah, um, it was a bit unlucky that he drew so many agendas at the start because he f really forced him to rush to protect. Yeah, so he's now attempting the runner to uh, rush uh, that server. I don't think the runner is going to take the bait because that he can't. We'll see how it goes. But uh, just for the people watching, that's not actually an agenda going down, though. That's the corporate yeah. troubleshooter. But that would look like an agenda, should probably, or or an agenda or something. But uh, it's basically a ruse. There's nothing in that server at all, still. Still, it's pretty useful in the future when you are going to play your agenda. So now Fritzl has a pretty decent economy. He's protected in almost all servers. No. Um, Mandatory upgrades is just so powerful versus a virus deck. Being able to 
clear your viruses and then still play cards in the one turn is huge. I mean, yeah. that is huge. It's really strong. That's why it costs six advancements, of course. Mm. And uh, you know, I just, I just feel, I still think, I still think it might have been better to score it earlier. And but, like, if he had this advantage earlier, he might not be in this position now. Yeah, obviously. But should have would yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're going to see the Probably Magnum Opus come down like... at least. Ah, he trusts the Magnum Opus. How did the Magnum Opus yeah, get trust? No, he I, trusted. He didn't have enough memory, okay. He didn't have enough hand size. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. He's got two brain damage, so he can only have three cards. I'm surprised he actually he... kept those two uh, siphons when he had two eyes in the HQ. Well, I guess the, siph the siphons are zero to cost. Hey, what's going on? There's a bug going on. No, I, I haven't seen any bug, so maybe something bugged out in his end, but I don't know what. He's not running the latest version. It had a, a, a version error when he connected. Okay, so he's just going to eat the uh, katana damage and uh, break through the auto target. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That is perfect for the... Uh, Sinquetica. Sinquetica can actually... Uh, sorry, uh, Fritz can even raise that corporate trouble and trust the last scripts, but I don't think he will. I don't know. Maybe he will. But it's probably not worth the money. It's uh, going to but cost a runner. It's going to cost a runner two to to trust the corporate troubleshooter anyway. So he might as well let him. Yeah, but it's not an agenda anyway. I mean, it was a good play. Yeah. So now uh, he's really we'll in a bad position. See concede. I think we're going to see a concede after this fails. No, I think he's going to actually use the corporate troubleshooter. Slept. <laughs> okay, sure. He's not going to raise a corporate troubleshooter. He he told us to wait because he wanted to have no further reactions. Excellent. That's a way to keep us excited, Fritzler. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way you give information out as well. Okay. Ah, he pressed the escape a bit too early, I guess. Now Fritzler has a pretty good opportunity to uh, play something because the runner is completely penniless. And no cards in hand and, and two brain damage. Yeah. Even to just pass that katana, he needs uh, three cards in his hand. So the best he can do is take exactly. three cards and run, but then he cannot uh, break. Uh, what he can do actually is uh, take three cards, run, and uh, then break the end around subroutine of Rototaret and lose his scripts. But um, I think uh, uh, Fritzel will take that into account. When he did connect, he had a he did have an error message. Unfortunately, the log doesn't go back that far. What's he saying? He says that when I picked at the corporate troubleshooter, he saw something like a parasite. <laughs> he uh, 
time check. He's done one run. Yes. He was run on his uh, second click. Oh, easy mark. What luck. Ah, perfect. That easy mark is going to help him quite a bit. Ooh, nice. Now he has quite a lot of money and that the toll booth is perfect. Because he can enter run before it even begins. Question is where to go, what to put first. He really needs to score those adjectives at some point. I put down toll booth and then put down priority acquisition. He also needs to protect archives in case he loses randomly. That is true, because he only needs one point. Yeah, but it's difficult to Any choose. What to select to uh, avoid losing randomly like that? Well, he's got the wall. The wall is not enough because uh, Crips is just going to take a token uh, before he runs anyway. Okay, he's going to, go to score the agenda immediately. I don't think he's going to use it though. Okay, so he only needs a three pointer now to win. Oh, a pawn shop. Listen, hand, that pawn shop is going to hurt. Help. I wonder what he's looking for. Maybe his uh, last days of war Crypsis. Oh, no, he already has a Crypsis. No, he's got a Crypsis. I'm not quite sure what he's digging. Oh, for. yet another agenda. He can actually score it. No, he can score it. He can score it in one turn if he just plays it now. So, how is he going to play it? I think play that agenda and play the toll booth is the best way. And then you'd guarantee at least a tiebreaker. <laughs> but how is he Four going to protect it? If he checks the archives, he knows he doesn't have any more steam hacks. But if he has a deja vu, he can get another steam hack. He's already played two deja vu, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he's played two. So it's a very low chance he'll have the last deja vu in his hand. And even if he has a steam hack, that's two for the deja vu, that's two credits. If he plays the uh, toll booth, that he needs uh, eight credits for the toll booth. So five plus three plus no, nine credits for the toll booth to break with Crypsis. So he needs one action as well. Two actions. I don't think it's possible for him to break through that server. So I think if he goes uh, toll booth and then uh, agenda, he can stop him. Exactly. To toll booth is uh, going to stop him dead already because he's only got four credits. Yeah, yeah. The, the the question is if he what what to deal with a steam hack if a steam hack is going to be enough. Uh, so I think the probably the best thing he can do is play that toll booth and maybe. Play that agenda and maybe play another ice on R and D. Which ice would he choose, though? I mean, the only one he can afford, the ice wall. Yeah, which is not really going to do anything, but uh, this is going to go in front. Yep, minus three. Okay, that's the ice wall, though. Okay, I'm not sure why he played the ice wall there. Ice wall is very cheap to break, but I guess he's going to just waste uh, tokens from Crypsis. I think I still think he should be rushing it now. Well, no, he hasn't. Uh, like I said, he's he's very he's very uh, methodical, very slow paced. But yeah, but I'm I talking about. I think he makes very solid calls. You know, I don't. Maybe maybe he shouldn't be running it. Okay, so Whoa. he's going to play both of these, and then he's probably okay. going going to go for the three pointer. Yep. No, he's going for it for sure. 
He can play it and advance it once, and then that's enough to uh, win next turn. Yep, there we go. However, if the runner runs HQ, he has a problem. And come on, advance it once. That's what you want to do. Okay, so he's going for the final play. Now it's going to be interesting what the runner does. I've seen... Oh, um, see what he draws. I've seen... Uh, uh, Fritzl played very bold plays. One time he played... He drew an agenda when he had like a lot of them. And he played it as soon as he drew it. And then advanced it twice. And that was so fast and so uh, bold that the runner completely thought it was a trap. Okay, <laughs> so he's going to go for a maker's eye eh, for a R&D run instead. Now is the luck with him? He probably won't raise this. It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's going to be luck or not luck. Uh, if he doesn't raise it, we have to do the calculations. Cost eight. Okay, so it's obviously he's going to go for that Heimdall. If he takes a Cripsis click... Huh? Oh, okay. He's running the archives to check. Okay, he won. That's it. Fritzler won. Oh. And that was the end of the game. There's no nothing he can do now. And uh, he didn't... I guess maybe... He f I don't know if he forgot that he can actually score a 3 point at Zeta with uh, mandatory upgrades. Or if he was just hoping to hit the final agenda with the uh, imp. Let's see. This is the last uh, chance he has. If he hit an agenda now. Yeah, he knows it too. No agenda. Nah. And this should be easy decision from Fritz. Uh, only in Fritz, it's just Frizzler though. Bang. Give him a net damage. Oh no, it wasn't that one. <laughs> he's not a, he's not Zinteki. So yeah, there we go. Very uh, good game. Uh, decisions, very good decisions from both players. And uh, the slow and methodical uh, of uh, Fritzler did actually get him to the end, even though he drew quite a lot of agendas, considered. Um, very interesting. I'm very happy that... Uh, mm, I'm very happy uh, Fritzler actually went uh, to the finals. To, uh, he moved on because, of course, he has a wizard. And uh, both me and Tragic are rooting for the wizard, of course. Oh, well, I think it's the only wizard in the competition completely, isn't it? And he, he has the, the reputation of being terrible. And everything else is Gabriel, most likely. Is, uh, are we, is there any Chaos decks in here? No, it's Chaos came out the next set, so it's not legal yet. It's not legal, right? No, only we've seen one Kate in the, in the uh, elimination rounds. Okay, well, thanks for joining me, Tragic, and uh, I appreciate you staying so late so for this. Yeah, sorry I was petering out so long towards the end. 
I, my, my coffee, my, the two coffees I had before we ran, <laughs> I ran out of steam a little. But uh, no, it was really, really fun.